Hi, everybody. Welcome to North of MAGA. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a quick little video that came out on France 24. It's about the exodus or the brain drain, if you will, from uh, the U.S. to Canada. So let's take a look. He's traded the streets of Connecticut for those of Toronto. He said Toronto. I feel free here in Canada, and so do my kids. Jason Stanley, 55, is a philosopher and a leading expert on fascism, and he fled Donald Trump's America to teach here. Behind his decision, the need to work freely, safe from the Trump administration's attacks on science and democratic institutions. I would have remained in the United States had Trump not won the election. My presence at Yale made Yale a target. Now, I'm completely... If you're an American researcher, please leave a comment. Please leave something in the comments. Let us know what you think about what's going on here. Completely unconstrained. I can say whatever I want. And to me, that's what Canada means right now. A place where you can say uh, critical things about other countries, critical things about the United States without fear. The, con the country of free speech, I thought, was, was the, the U.S. It's, it's so ironic. Like Jason Stanley, a record number of academics have left or are planning to leave the United States for Europe and Canada. The reason, repeated threats and more than $4 billion in cuts by the Trump administration to research it deems woke. The health sector has also been hit. They're trying to, they're trying to get rid of woke science as if it's a thing. Do you remember when Trump was giving his speech about, I don't remember what it was, he was talking about transgenic mice, how how researchers were creating transgenic mice so that they could more uh, appropriately uh, respond in the way that humans respond to drugs and medicine and so on. And tr uh, Trump was talking about how they're making um, mice transgender. This is a fundamental, a fundamental lack of any kind of education or knowledge. This is kind of scary. Okay, let's continue. I'll be quiet for a bit. This international relations expert moved to Canada with his wife and colleague Nina. Both say the attacks on research in the U.S. go far beyond Trump's own political targets. Could you imagine if Aristotle or Plato or Archimedes didn't have anybody to fund them? Could you imagine where we'd be today? Huh. It's kind of, yeah, here we go. One more time. The presidents of Canada's top universities have put out an op-ed in a local press calling on Ottawa to finally make Canada a global leader in scientific research, as its current budget still lags well behind G7 and OECD averages. The time is now. It's amazing how long it takes us for, to, to react to anything. If we want to go get amazing researchers, this is it. This is it. In the same way that the U.S. came and grabbed all of our amazing aerospace engineers after they force us to cancel the arrow. This is our opportunity. I think a real shift in mindset is needed to restore Canada's place as a global leader in science, in knowledge creation and innovation. It's clear we need to reinvest, especially if we want to seize this opportunity. Yes. What I call an unfortunate opportunity. Because we have to remember that what's happening reflects a global weakening of science, given the United States' dominant role in research since World War II. Across the country, some local governments have taken matters into their own hands, Good. launching charm offensives to lure top American talent. Montreal, Canada's second largest city, is home to four major international universities. Please come to Montreal. Beautiful city, amazing food, great nightlife. Just fantastic city. I, I'm originally from Montreal, but I don't live there anymore. Just, uh, just think about coming to Canada. BC's got some great universities. Or you got, you know, across the country, there's great universities. At the city's request, this economic development agency ran a summer-long ad campaign across major U.S. campuses, from California to Massachusetts. The campaign quickly led to an unprecedented wave of applications from American academics. We went with a simple message, Montreal loves researchers. It targeted people driven by innovation, knowledge, and science, many of them in healthcare. There's got to be a way to synergize this more than just Montreal, though. I'm convinced that the federal government's got to get involved to, to start pulling people in. This is super interesting. What a great time to be a, to be a researcher. 
in Canada. According to a survey published in Nature magazine in March, three quarters of researchers say they're ready to leave the United States if the Trump administration maintains its budget cuts. Three quarters of researchers are ready to, to move if something doesn't happen about the budget cuts. Again, opportunity, opportunity, opportunity is just fantastic news. Uh, if you enjoyed, please like, please subscribe if you want more stuff like this. Um, and also come see my new channel, From Systems to Strategy, Business and Tech. I'll put all the, everything in the description down below. Thank you so much. Go play outside.